the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody, God bless you. Hey, I hope you had a great, hope you had a great week, a weekend, and I hope you're going to have a great week coming up. And I just want to continue to, we're going to continue to focus on uh, teaching the Word of God and, and making sure that we don't get into or trap into uh, the steal, kill, and destroy that the system always wants us to do, you know? Uh, we need to sit there and focus on what God wants us to do, what the Word of God has asked us to do. Because we, you know, religion has really, and, and the people have really jacked up uh, and manipulated the, the scriptures uh, and, and deceived many of us to think that we're doing the right thing by doing, thinking us to do the right thing even though we do the wrong thing. Opposing the fact is that we need to do the right thing by following what the Word of God tells us to do, to do His will. I sit there and had this um, title today because I, I will sit there instead of calling somebody, just because somebody calls us a Christian, I, I will sit there and say that the non believers based on the fruits that they bear. And the title I have a non believer is using Christianity as a cover to steal, kill, and destroy. And I think a lot of people have been manipulated to steal, kill, and destroy because of their unwillingness to just read the word of God for themselves. You are New Testament saints. You're not Old Testament saints. So you are supposed to follow Christ. And the question is, all the expectations and all the colonization and all the lynching and all the discrimination and all the hate crime and all that other stuff, are those things based on non-believers using Christianity as a cover? A non-believer is simple as this. You can profess yourself as a Christ, as a Christian, but if you're not doing the, what the Word of God says, what the Word of God, not the opinion of others, but what the Word of God says, then it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can call yourself a Christian all day long. But a tree is known by its fruit. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're talking about the history. And we're going to use more history as, as well. We're going to use modern day. We even talked about the, the shooting in, in uh, Jacksonville uh, on the 26th of August. This day is the 27th. The, the 26th of August is a, a man went into, a young man too. That means he was taught. He was, he was molded to, to be able to hate people just because of the mere color of their skin. To steal, kill, and destroy and I guarantee you, I bet you if you take his, 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 uh, his when they come out with his background, I guarantee you he will call himself a Christian or been raised in a Christian family. Because I, a lot of people go to church, but they don't do the will of the Father. They don't do the will of Christ. They don't follow Christ. His commandments love one another. They don't want to be led by the Holy Spirit. They want to be led by their flesh. And we need to recognize that we just asking people, if you're not going to be a Christian, stop calling yourself a Christian. If you're not going to be a Christian, stop trying to close yourself as a Christian. And then do bad things. Because the only Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Christ comes to give life and life more abundantly. We're supposed to be ambassadors of Christ. And that's one of the things I wanted to be able to share with you on the, the, the foundational scripture for this study today is the fact that, that you are supposed to be ambassador for Christ. That's who you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be reconciling the world together, not trying to turn them apart. Not sitting there trying to, 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 to manipulate people and exploit people. Do what the Word says, amen? Look at the scripture in 2 Corinthians 5, 14. For the love of Christ constrained us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that we die for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. 
Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after flesh, yo though we have known Christ after flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and has given us a ministry of reconciliation. And to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has given and have committed to us the word of reconciliation. That's why you can't have Christian nationalists, because that means you're trying to sit there and think that we stop somewhere. No, well, we, we're supposed to reconcile the world unto God. We're supposed to be ambassador of Christ. He said, verse 20, so now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you and Christ stand be reconciled unto God. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteous of God in him. Those are scriptures used when we use some historical data, we're going to use some historical pictures of hate and all that other stuff that is not supposed to be in the fruits of a Christian. You're supposed to love one another, bear good fruit, amen? Hey, I hope you enjoy the session. I will break these up in A, B, C, and D. Don't forget to subscribe if you get a chance. Leave a comment if you can. But just remember, Yeshua, Jesus is Lord, and we do what he wants us to do. Hope you enjoyed this session coming up, and uh, I'll see you when I see you. God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Let's go. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hope everybody had a great week, and I uh, hope everybody will have a great Sunday. And I hope everybody had uh, just a great life. Amen. And, and that life is in Christ. This is this is what they are definitely want to be able to say. That is that our foundation. Uh, is in Christ. Uh, and you know, I want to be able to talk about something today. If it's it been, if it, if it been a challenging, I think, for most of us to, to look at uh, Christianity and, and deal with the behavior and actions of other people as we supposed to preach the gospel. Isn't that, I mean, that's the whole purpose of, of, of our ministry, right? Is to preach the gospel. What's the gospel? The gospel is called the good news. Amen. We're supposed to preach the good news. And 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 therefore, I want to be able to, uh, let me put it that way, uh, really get down to uh, uh, reminding Believers in Christ, believers in God, uh, believers being led by the Holy Spirit to, to take our faith back from people who have, have corrupted the gospel. And you know, not only corrupted the gospel, I'm talking about even when, when Christ came, the Sadducees and Pharisees you know, they were so legalistic that they even forgot the the weightier matters of the law <laughs> of love, uh, of loving thy neighbor as thyself. Uh, we, Christianity is not, even I'm talking about even back with the, uh, the Jewish people, it was not for us. The reason when, when the, the, the Jews, the Hebrews, went into the promised land, and, and push all those people out because he said he didn't want them to do the same things that the uh, the Canaanites and so forth were doing in, in the Promised Land, and and that that was the whole purpose of that the the, the, the sin, the transgression that that they have risen to. But that was un one of the things too is that as we go into the study today. That was for a nation of people that were not born again, that were sent to the promised land uh, 
delivered from bondage and and to to go into the land that God promised them. They promised Abraham a long time ago. As we read some of the articles and one article I put in today, Christians for some reason believe that that's what they're supposed to be doing when they went and did conquering of, of, of creating empires throughout the world. And, and I can see why people ban books. They want to ban books. Uh, today, excuse me. Uh, because when you when you look at the history uh, of, of Christianity anyway, uh, and you see the, the atrocity, you sit there and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are we doing what we're called to do? And what I'm called, what this, this session today is really about is remind you to do what you're called to do instead of what the world has manipulated our faith and probably many other types of uh, belief systems to do things that is contrary to the will of God. That's all we, that's, you know, we're supposed to be ambassadors for Christ. So why don't we, let's start doing that. Let's start focusing on what we need to do or what we need to do to be ambassadors for Christ. Uh, because if we can do that, we make a difference. We can make this a place of, 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 of peace and prosperity, uh, of getting along with one another, and holding on to the doctrine of Christianity. Many people sit there and, 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 and I, I can relate where they're coming from. Uh, watch us sit there and relate to the Old Testament to, to justify bad behavior. And, 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 and the thing about it is that's not what you're called to do. The commission is to go preach the gospel. You don't preach the gospel through hate and violence and and then an atrocity. You don't do that. That's what people have done. So we're going to go through the, the scripture today, focusing on the the uh, what we're supposed to do and what has been done in history that is contrary to the teaching of the gospel. There and then people have used, and this is one of the things I will put out here right now. Many have used excuses to justify bad behavior. Many, many believe that this is okay. Well, I'm, I'm gonna be angry and evil and do bad things. I'm gonna steal, kill, and destroy because I can find all I need is a justification. All I need is a some side, some purpose to to manipulate, export other things from people and say, I'm doing the will of God. And, and that is the greatest tragedy is to say in the name of Christ to commit atrocities. It's, 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 I just want you to understand, believers, if you are a believer, and I know you've been deceived because I'm doing that. We, we talked last week and a couple of weeks on how uh, ministries have basically given people and taught people and educated people who don't didn't read the Bible couldn't read in some cases to do bad things and and not hold them accountable I, I'm going to talk about the fact is that some of the missionaries and stuff like that were used to go into countries to to as, as spies basically not to preach the gospel but to to survey the land and, and determine what's the best approach of how to go in there and 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 exploit people and take and conquer the land. I see way even capitalism starts off right. I mean it starts off trying to do trade with people and everything else and then then bring in the military to enforce treaties and, and, and agreements that benefits the people that's colonizing or exploiting other places. Uh, it, it just looks like a the playbook of when they talk about how the the uh, if you talk about Genesis how Satan came in subtly, right? It's it's, it's almost like the same playbook 
of people bringing in and saying, okay, we're coming to preach the gospel. We're trying to make sure you understand the word of God. And then all of a sudden we want to sit there and start bringing in merchants and then we want to bring in the military. Then we want to do some bad things to people. And see, I'm saying you're doing it for Christ. As Christian, not as Hebrews. But then try to reflect on the Hebrews to give you an example to go do the bad thing that that uh, you're not called to do. And I'm trying to say to say it's better for you to go be be something else. Stop calling yourself a Christian. Be something else. You already know your condemnation. You already know what's going to happen to you after you die. So so why try to manipulate the belief, the word of God, for your benefit? It's just not right. And that's what I want to talk about today. I, I, I really want us to, to really get into understanding the importance for you. Everybody, whoever listen to this, read the gospel for yourself and live the gospel. Live by the word and the teaching of Christ. Instead of trying to live by the manipulation and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and all kinds of fleshly desires. Live by Christ. We, we know we're not perfect, right? We know we, don't, we all make mistakes. But when we make a mistake to the point where we steal, kill, and destroy, that's when we realize that we're not we're not following Christ. We're following something else. You know, you know, in John 14, 6, he says, I'm the way, the truth, and the light. No one comes to follow up on me. So to be able to allow ourselves to be manipulated by other people to do bad things and still profess that you're following Christ, something is wrong with us because we're not doing that which we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be people who love peace and love and mercy and grace. That is the gospel. That's what God so loved the world. John 3, 16, he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So whoso believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You, you, you can't believe in him and still try to commit atrocities. And this but atrocities have been going, we talked about it last week, since 3th century BC, a week before, the 3rd century, the, the militaristic, the militaristic uh, to, to go and exploit people and, and do bad things started all the way back. So we're talking hundreds and hundreds of years that have infiltrated the gospel. And now I can see why people get turned off. So let's let us, this is an opportunity, because it's all about repenting, right? It's all about saying this, hey, let's get it right. Let's, let's focus on the teaching and the doctrine of Christianity, of Christ. This is this is an opportunity. It's not so much to look at the history to, to make us feel bad. It's to look at the history and recognize what we need to repent, what we need to do 180 degrees turn. It's not doing the things that is satisfying, you know, pleasing to the eyes of God. So let's look at that, amen? All right, one of the things I want to show you was the, uh, the study, the title I have here. And the reason I, I think this title is more appropriate uh, is that and here it is right here it says are non-believers using Christianity as a cover to steal kill and destroy is, is that if that's what non-believers are doing because the reason I put that term non-believers because the fact is what are we aren't we believers and if we're believers, we do the things that we're called to do, Christ called us to do. And if Christ called us to do it, and then these things that we saw, these atrocities, these massacres, these uh, uh, exploitations, uh, these, these lynching and all that other stuff, are those believers? Well, the bottom line is the Bible says a tree is known by its fruit. And I was therefore based on the fact is, I, I, I can't say Christians, right? Because you're not bearing Christian fruit when you do these things far we're talking about from history. So are non-believers using Christianity as a cover to steal, kill, and destroy? 
The reason I'm saying is that it must be a non-believer because obviously in John 10, 10, Christ said the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I came to give life and life more abundantly. That lines up with John 3, 16. And so therefore, we, we, there's no way that we're going to sit there, even though somebody is trying to profess himself as a Christian, I'm not going to say that Christianity is, is, the, is, the, is the reason behind all the atrocities that we've seen in this world. It, it's just, it's, it's just a manipulation that people have done. And I, that's why I call it, you know, the, 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 the wolf in sheep clothing scenario. People hijack the faith, hijack the teaching of Christ to justify bad behavior, steal, kill, and destroy. We need to know the difference. And so many ministries have fallen into the same trap. Instead of sitting there and saying, point toward Christ, do what Christ does. Focus on the love, focus on the, on, on, on the truth. And understand, yes, I do make mistakes, you make mistakes. But it's not to practice bad mistakes, but to practice following the teaching and the doctrine of Christianity. You know, in the bottom line, that is to love one another. Amen. All right, so that's the question. I'm sitting there saying is, I think a lot of these historical things that we're going to refer to and relate back to in the scriptures today are based on people using the gospel using the doctrine of Christianity to, as a cover, to do bad things. And it, it, it is terrible. I'm talking about uh, how they even use, when they went into the different uh, countries, they come in with the, uh, with the Christianity faith and doctrine, and then quickly turn into these monsters that, that rape and kill and destroy people's lives. I mean, uh, that 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 dog don't hunt, but it has been been done and used over and over again, you know. And and, and we got we got to get past this. We I'm trying to say is take back your faith. And how do you take back your faith by living your the teaching and the doctrine of Christ? You it's been lied to, been there been long enough. What does the Bible say? Right? What does what would Jesus do? Right? Those are things that we have to look at and as we move forward. What does or what would Jesus do? Is how you're supposed to react in the things that happen in life. Yes, we get angry. Yes, we make mistakes. But it, when you get to the point where you're so angry that you kill somebody, then you know you're not following Christ. You're following something else. You're not doing the right thing. You're not doing what Christ called you to do. You're not going the way. You're going in the way of death. And that's what we want to make sure we don't want to do. And that's why I do use platforms such as these to just teach people, do the right thing. Read the book for yourself and stop letting uh, ministries and, 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 and politics and everything else manipulate you. We got to get past this. If we're going to be believers, we got to get past this. We got to do the thing that is acceptable in the eyes of God and pleasing in the sight of God, not man. Because as long as we keep doing the things that are pleasing in the sight of man, we are leaving ourselves for eternal destruction. And one of my friends, he told me to say, oh, you peddling the eternal life thing. Well, the thing about it is, somebody better pour something out. Somebody's got to sit there and tell people, look, if you keep going this way, to, to sit there and pretend that, okay, uh, uh, those who don't believe at all, because that's what a non-believer does, right? Is to say, you, you're nothing going to happen to you. That's not, that's not our belief. That's not our faith system. Our faith system is, yes, something will happen to you. Either eternal life or eternal death. It's not peddling. It's just reality, you know? But the, 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 the try to sit there and say, well, the, the not to have that is then what is the answer? Because that's, that's another thing about it, right? Either we preach the answer 
from the scriptures or do we have another teaching that's going to also lead to where people live together and work together because they're not when they're not having a foundation or moral foundation to stand on. It is bad enough to have a moral foundation and then to still use manipulation, still steal, still kill and destroy. That's what we're going to focus on, right? And one of the things we want to do with what's this Lord's Prayer? Because I call that the reminder's prayer, right? Hey, everybody, God bless you. I hope you enjoyed that session. I hope you will stick around and listen to the other session. We're trying to bring them out daily. Um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we're sending it, send it out to the people on my distribution list on the, te on the uh, text. But the rest of you will just, we'll see it on YouTube as well as uh, Facebook. Uh, but take a look at this study. Chew on it. Yes, we have a history. We, as believers, and we call ourselves believers. And there's people who pretend to be believers have done some very bad things and manipulated a lot of people. A lot of people didn't know. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, some of the slides there before it all goes back to the first century uh, CE of, of being a, a militaristic type of organization. And, and, and all that stuff has been passed on from generation to generation. And, and the sad thing about it, most believers, you don't read the scriptures. You listen to somebody else and, and you sit there and make your decision based on what somebody else is saying instead of reading the scripture for yourself. I'm encouraging you, read the New Testament. You're supposed to be, if you call yourself a Christian, you need to read the New Testament to see what Christ taught you. You, could, you want to be conforming to the image of His Son, God's Son, Christ. Amen? You, that's what the scriptures say. Let's read the scriptures. Let's stop sitting there and let other people tell us what the scriptures say. And then we are doing bad things. And we know we're doing bad things. We know we're doing a steal, the kill, and destroy. We know that. So what do we learn to do what the Father taught us to do? Through Christ. Let us learn to be led by the Holy Spirit. That's what the, this session is all about. It's, it's, it's not about banning or hiding history. It's about repenting. Because that's what we can do. We can repent. We can let our light shine. And I, and I encourage us, all of us, to do that. Let our light shine. Let us do the thing that is acceptable to the will of the Father. Let's do the Lord's Prayer every day so we can remind ourselves of doing His will and not our own will. Amen. God loves you. He really does. It isn't whether you're a believer or not a believer. He wants you to be reconciled to him. Not to people, not to ministries, but to him. And that's all I encourage you to do too. Reconcile yourself to God. Get that spirituality of being who he wants you to be instead of what the world wants you to be. Stop being manipulated. And start understanding the truth. For the truth will make you free. The truth will set you free. The truth matters. We know we see in our news media that everything else lies. We saw the Sudan killing in, in Jacksonville. Once again, a senseless killing. Based on what they was told. And, and, and the person killed himself. Even the scripture is like, well, what were you doing? Then that person now has to go before God. We'll go just like all the rest of us as well. And I just hope we don't sit there and say he's looking for his advocate, but he never knew his advocate. He'll do hate. And then he died. Let's not be the same way, okay? All right. God bless you. Uh, I, like I said, I hope you enjoy this segment. And the encouragement is to continue to study. Read the Word of God. Read the New Testament for yourself. And let Christ be the example. It is all about love. It's all about mercy. It's all about grace. Amen. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave comments. And I'll see you when I see you. God bless you. Thank you for listening. I really do appreciate it. God bless. Bye-bye. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
love it. 